The pasty is a UK culinary cornerstone. If you've never been over here or had one, tweet Ben and he'll book you a flight. He also has a spare bedroom. Today we're recreating the classic pasty, but this time for a vegetarian. We've teamed up with Kenwood to get perfect pastry, a big hitting mushroom filling and a spiced tomato chutney too. Or I'll tell you what, you could text him on 078... No, 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 no. This starts with an unbelievable homemade pastry. I know, homemade pastry and a beautiful mushroom filling. Yeah, both super simple. Now, normally they would both have meat in them, steak in the mm -hmm. filling, a steak mince or chopped steak, and lard in the pastry. We're making them both vegetarian, but equally delicious, crumbly and rich. So first up, the pastry. You can do this by hand by rubbing these two together with your fingers, but yep. it's much quicker and avoids the kind of it getting too sticky by doing it with the blade and the food processor. So plain flour, a little bit of salt, and then cold diced butter. You'll need the exact weights and measurements, but you can get those down below. And blitz it until you've got a fine crumb, something that looks like breadcrumbs. And then while it's going round, slowly, we can dribble in a couple of tablespoons of cold water. You don't need a lot, but you should be able to listen to hear when it's ready. What am I listening for? You'll, it just changes. It just changes. It sounds like this. Yeah. And then it changes to this. This better change. See? It was subtle. It was very subtle. It goes I'll from, go with it. It goes from a floury paste to like a chewy paste. Just a couple of tablespoons. Don't ignore the sound thing, just look at it. What we're going to avoid doing is adding too much liquid to this at this stage, because two tablespoons should be enough. The rest will press together. So literally just tip it out into a board or in a bowl and just with your hands it should just come together you're not looking to knead pastry it will just come together into one lump pretty easy I like making the crumble by hand and the rubbing in yeah but for pastry a machine just makes it so much quicker which means you don't overwork the pastry yeah overwork pastry results in chewy pastry rather than buttery crumbly pastry so less is more and the machine does it so much quicker than you can by hand now the thing with any pastry is you want to leave it to rest so we're going to wrap it up in cling film and pop it into the fridge while we make our filling what does the fridge do it lets it chill out so gluten is this thing in pastry which makes it stretchy and gives it structure but with bread you need it lots because yep. you want it stretchy pastry you don't want to need it you don't want it stretchy and what we have done is kind of move it about a bit, so we're just going to give it a chance to chill out down, so that we end relax. up with a nice pastry that doesn't shrink back and become chewy. In the meantime, our pastry filling... This is my favourite bit, a beautiful mushroom filling. It gives almost a dangerous world, talking about a vegetarian dish, a meatiness to the, to the pastry. A saviness, an umami yep. and that's what mushrooms give. So what we're going to do is just peel it to get rid of the leathery bit, because big mushrooms, I think, need it. And I never would... bother. I just chuck it straight in. I don't with button mushrooms, but... With these ones, this is very leathery and behaves mm -hmm. very differently to the rest of the mushroom. Then we're going to break it up into the food processor with the blade and chop it into a fine dice. Essentially, we're making Cornish pasty filling. So it's got the usual potato, onion, carrot, the parsley. But instead of peppered steak, we're using peppered mushrooms. And once it's nice and fine, that can go into a pan. Nice big ones, you've got yep. lots of surface area, and reduce down to pretty much half its size because so much of mushroom is water and you want to get rid of all that. That wouldn't sound like that if it was a mushroom. It wouldn't. It wouldn't flop like that if it was a mushroom. It wouldn't, no. But a mushroom paste, we're going to get some of the Important water out. Flop. While he's flopping, we're going to peel an onion, carrot, garlic, a potato, and finally dice them all. OK, so this is what we've got. We've got ourselves an amazing mushroom paste. Still wet. Still flopping but a lot less so because of all the steam that's come off of it. Now we're going to season it generously with salt and black pepper and then add in all of our chopped stuff. So that's the potato, the carrot, the onion, the garlic, fresh parsley and a little bit of mustard powder. Mix it all together, filling done. Filling done, now pasty time. Yes, the pastry has cooled down and we've taken it out of the fridge for 10 minutes or so, so it is kind of perfect to roll. You're making a mess over no, the no, board. No, this, this, this satisfies it because the key here is you don't want to add too much flour to your pastry. Dough down and roll it as thin as you pretty much can. You're looking for about half a centimetre. And then what we're going to do is cut circles out as the base for our pasties. And ideally, we're going to get three out of this one. We'll re-roll the scraps once. You shouldn't really re-roll pastry too many times. Once is OK to get a fourth. 
So with your pastry discs, what we want to do is place a couple of heat tablespoons in the middle. Go generous on Go filling, hard. but not so generous that you can't close it. Wet around the top edge, and then lift both up. And then what you want to do is make sure it's completely sealed with a little bit of a crimp. You need a good crimp around any pasta, that is important. And the crimp kind of defines it. We've gone for a top crimp, i.e. the crimp is on the top. Now they're all sealed in and crimped, we're gonna give them a bit of an egg wash on top and bake them off. Now 40 minutes at 180 degrees Celsius is perfect to give you a golden color and a crisp pastry, but inside it gets so hot in that enclosed space that we'll it also cooks well. the potato and yeah. the onion and the potato and it's delicious. We wanna give them at least 15 minutes of resting before we tuck in. Our pasty has got loads of mustard powder and black pepper in it. Yep. This should be sweet and slightly tangy tomato ketchup. We're gonna make our own and it's so simple. One tin of tomatoes, one onion, peeled and roughly diced, one clove of garlic, 100 grams of brown sugar, 50 ml of red wine vinegar, and some spices, fennel seeds and coriander seeds. Put the whole thing into a blender, blitz it up, and then bubble it in a pan so it reduces by about half. Once your tomato relish or oh. chutney or ketchup has cooled, it looks like that. And the pasties are still warm from the oven, but not so burn golden. your tongue off. They are our mushroom pasties sorted. A pasty's got to be good and handheld, but when you crack into it, hopefully we've got, still got steam inside. I'm going in. That. I trust you when you say it's the perfect temperature. Eat it, okay? Oh. This is one of those words I hate to describe food with, but it's got a depth. What it's I love deep. is those little cubes of carrot and potato, perfectly cooked, mm. but still perfectly cub cubular, because mm. they've just cooked in the steam inside. The fennel and the coriander in that are your secret weapon. Okay. Well played, sir. Well played. So we've subbed out the steak for mushroom, the lard for butter, That's and an amazing. amazing pastry. The sauce is awesome. We're going to want to give it a go, and the full recipe is available in the link mm. down below. And these, just as good tomorrow, 15 minutes in a warm oven to heat through.